Lecture 5-5. Five, five. Excellent. Welcome back to Lecture World. Welcome back to the Blue Cube. Alrighty, Lecture 5-5. Five, five. Um, you notice I'm, I'm trying to be clever with things. Sometimes I try too hard to be clever, but the eyes have it. Binocular cues. When I went through what the textbook said about depth perception, um, you know, most of it was really cool and interesting, uh, but they missed the coolest and most interesting part. Uh, and so I want to highlight um, something that I think is really cool. Plus, you know, and again, I, I like to have little, um, I don't know, things you can see, feel, or, or experience that really try to bring this to life. And I've got one here, so I want to use that. So it really relates to just this question of where, you know, we talked a little bit about recognizing what we're seeing, but again, it's just as critical to the visual system to know where those things are uh, in space. And in fact, one of the reasons that we think that humans have really um, specialized in vision is because of its ability to provide you information at a distance. Again, we are not physically the most powerful creatures out there. There are all sorts of animals um, that could take us down quite easily. Um, we're very good at making tools, and that's one way we can sort of fight back, so to speak. Um, but it also, you know, before we had many good tools, it was also very handy to be able to see these things at a distance and have time to make decisions about how to behave. Um, do we run away? Do we go get our hunting gear and chase after it? You know, what do we do? Um, the, the example I like to give you guys sometimes is more to do with uh, ex-boyfriends or ex-girlfriends. You know, imagine you see that ex coming a ways away. Um, you, you have time to decide what to do. You know, do I pretend I didn't see them and get the heck out of here? Or, or do I start to consider what would be a nice thing to say and, and you know, try to start some sort of reconciliation or, or, or whatever afterwards? So at any rate, we like having the time that comes with seeing things at a distance. And we use all sorts of signals to figure out how far away things are. There are a bunch of monocular cues um, and there are some binocular cues. So one of the things I do, geez, I can't really do it. Yes, I can do it. Oh, come on. I have to come up with new versions of all my demos. So what am I gonna do? Here, here's my little notepad and I create a little ball. And what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to move back here a little bit and I'm going to throw this ball in the air and I'm going to catch it with one hand, okay? But first I'm going to use two eyes and then I'll use one eye and let's see um, what changes, okay? And I'm intentionally going to throw it in sort of sort of weird ways so I have to adjust my catch to, to catch it. So let me just go back on my little wheelie round chair that you guys now know what it is, all right? So hopefully this is far enough back. So tough that I'm driving over. Okay, there we go. Uh, I think I'm far enough back now. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me, but it doesn't matter. Um, watch. Okay, both eyes. Shoot. Even with both eyes. Now, in order to do this, this is, you know, me knowing where it is. Now, I agree it's not really depth. That's hard to do. There you go, oh, freaky thing. Um, it's but it is me figuring out where this is going to land and getting my hand in the right position to catch it. So that's with two eyes. So now let me close an eye. Okay. So what's my <laughs> what's my point? What am I trying to do here? When I did this in class, back in the days when we had class, it would be me and a student. I would get a student up and we would toss something back and forth and we'd use one eye and we'd use two eyes. And what you find is, first of all, even with one eye, we're okay. Um, we can infer depth with one eye. So if you have one eye shut, you can still throw things around and we can still catch them. But what you see is that when we have one eye, we seem kind of inelegant, non-graceful. We're making quick little changes on the fly to try to grab it. I don't know if that came through when I did it with one eye, but quick corrections and, and, and it looks kind of kludgy. Whereas with two eyes, it looks far smoother, much easier to do with two eyes than it is with one eye. Um, and so, you know, that's why we have two eyes. It gives us an advantage in depth perception. Um, 
So how do we do that? And so the textbook talks a lot about what we can do with one eye, how we can use interposition, texture, perspective, shading, motion parallax, um, how we can use these things with one eye uh, in, in order to get depth. And that's why we're able to with one. But two gives us a little extra information. In fact, it gives us two, two sorts of things that are really good convergence, which the textbook did a pretty good job on, and retinal disparity, where the textbook blew a really critical point, in my opinion, in my opinion. Didn't blow it, it missed a critical point. So I wanna focus in on the binocular here um, and, and just talk about that because I think the book does fine on the monocular. And I'll start with the thing I think it did, did a fine job on, which is convergence. But just to make this point again, every time your eye looks at something, it um, the eyes face it whatever that thing is. So your two eyes, you know, come together onto that thing, just, you know, just as you're seeing here with these diagrams. And so depending on how far that thing is, the eyes have to come together more or less. Um, if that thing's pretty close to us, like you see with the flower here, you don't have to bend your eyes in very much. Okay, it's right there. But the further it gets away from us, as you look you know, way off into the horizon at some point in the horizon, your, your eyes have to come closer and closer, like they have to come more and more of an angle. So I say more and more of an angle, but it's actually sort of less and less of an angle, right? They make a tighter angle, if you consider this angle, uh, the further the thing is away. So there are little muscles on our eye that control our eyes' ability to do that. And those muscles send signals back to the brain. So the brain can tell what position those muscles have the eye in. And so it can actually look at how convergent the eyes are. Uh, and it can use that to detect how far away is that thing you're looking at. If th those of you who golf and have those little devices that you point at the pin and it tells you how far away it is, that's kind of what's going on here. You know, the two eyes, whatever we're looking at, we have just from the convergence on our eyes, um, just from the what those muscles have to do to help us fix that thing, we have a sense of how far that is away, okay? So that's really cool for what we're looking at. The thing that the next part brings in, retinal disparity, is it also tells you about the things that are around the thing you're looking at. Okay, let's have some fun. Um, this will freak you out. I like to freak you out. Um, this will freak you out, but but the really freaky part of this is the fact that you know I'm gonna I'm going to show you how to see something. You will notice something that is happening all the time um, to everything you're not fixating on, but you don't notice it most of the time. Um, you only will notice it in this, in this situation I described to you because of the cleanness of what we're doing. That made no sense. So let's do it. Here is what I would like you to do. Try to find some wall like I have here, like a nice solid blue wall, let's say, or, you know, something that's a nice solid dark color. And I'm going to ask you, I'll do it facing you first of all, and then I'll do it um, facing the other way so you'll have a sense. I'm going to ask you to put your fingers up like this and to focus your eye on the, on the knuckle up here of your front finger. And while you're doing that, start with the second finger right behind it. In fact, so far behind it, maybe you only see one finger. But then, with this backhand, move it away from you. While... Hey, why is it not working? <laughs> Hang on, my retinal disparity is broken. Oh, because I closed one eye. What an idiot! You don't close one eye. So focus. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Um, focus on that, and then keep both eyes open, and 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 do this. If you close one eye. It won't work, uh, as you'll see, and, and we'll, we'll visit that. And so again, just to be clear about what I'm doing from a side, I'm staring right there, and I'm moving this away from me or, or back. Now, do that. Um, and as you do that, prepare to have your mind blown. What happens to that finger as you move it away from you? Well, first thing you should notice is there's two of them. That should freak out a little bit because you know there's only one, right? You can wiggle it and say one, but there's two of them. And as you move that away from you, 
those two become further apart from each other and further from this one, even though there still should be in a direct line. What the heck is going on? Why is there two of them? Okay, so let's think about this for a moment. My attention is here. My fixation is here. As I move this, it's going to cast an image on the retina of both eyes. But because I'm fixating here, this, this won't be right in the fovea. It won't land right in the middle. Uh, it'll land in the periphery. And it turns out it lands in the left periphery of one eye and the right periphery of the other eye, which is why we suddenly see two. Um, and, and the further it gets off that foveal point, the one we're focusing on, the further into the periphery that other one goes. And so we end up with two images that are um, uh, uh, that move away from the thing we're focusing on. And the further they are away from that focal point, the further apart those two versions of the image are. What does that mean? This is the cool thing. When you're looking in the world, you focus on something. Again, thanks to this, convergence, whatever you're focusing on, you have a good idea how far that is away from you. But everything you're not focusing on is now falling on each of your retinas. And there's actually two of them. We don't notice this. Everything we're not paying attention to, there's two of them. Ah, one second. Wow, interruptions constantly. Okay, we're back. All right, retinal disparity. So uh, again, let me just get to that main point because you've had the demo. And the main point is kind of listed here. When we're looking at the world, we focus on something and we know how far that is because of convergence. Um, but then everything around that thing is actually causing two images on our retina. It's causing this retinal disparity. We don't see all these pairs of everything else, but they are there. And the further those things are from the point that we're focusing on, the wider that retinal disparity. So what this means is you focus on something there and you know where it is, but also all the things around it, you get a sense of where they are relative to it. How close are they relative to the thing you're looking at? Um, and that's where I think the textbook kind of booted it because I find that so freaking Cool. Um, let's let's say this another way. If you're looking, you know, down at a ball field, like a baseball field. I don't know if you guys are baseball people, but if you're looking at second base and at, and at the second baseman, you kind of have a sense of how far he is, but also everybody around him. While you're looking at him, you get a sense of where they are relative to him. It's not conscious. Okay, you're not consciously aware of any of this happening. But if suddenly you have to change your orientation, if someone says, look at the right fielder, your brain kind of knows where that person is relative to where you're looking and you can reorient really quickly. So with one glance, we know where the thing we're looking at, we know where it is, and we kind of know where everything else is laid out around it because of retinal disparity. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. That's one of the reasons you have two eyes. Um, you know, one of the big things that two eyes kind of gives us. So throw that out there for you. I'll let you think about that. See you at the next lecture. See you guys. Bye-bye.